Hey everyone, this is Ryan Steva from homesteadconsultant.com. Today I am doing a full off-grid solar installation system for a small cabin and I'm going to go over all the different parts and pieces that I'm using, why I'm using them, and uh, try to show you how I installed the system. Uh, so the first and kind of base part of this system is the EG4 3000 uh, EHV-48 solar inverter charge controller that's that uh, yellowish orange box you see up to the top right there uh, there is a really specific reason i chose that over other systems that are available one is it is a great price uh, two is that it is fully off-grid capable three uh, it can actually be expanded so it can be you can connect multiple together to uh, expand the connection or the the power of the system uh, and four, and this was really important for me for this project, was that it was high voltage capable coming from the solar panels. So I can run the panels at five, uh, 500 volts, which allows me to run a cable easier or a, a less large expensive cable from the panels with less loss over the distance because the voltage is higher. So uh, here you can see me installing the cable into the building. This is the solar cable or solar wires and then uh, putting them in through an LB box. Those LB boxes are great because they allow you to pull things through later. Um, now I laid out the cable and I actually pushed the uh, conduit up and over that, which was a fairly simple way to do it in this case. Uh, this is a disconnect that I'm putting in because I'm using higher voltage. In this case, it's going to be 400 volts coming from the panels. I wanted to make absolutely sure that we were able to shut it off at the panels if there's ever an emergency or if maintenance needed to be done on any portion of the cable that was not directly connected to the uh, panels. So here you can see me fiddling around on my phone. I needed to make sure the disconnect uh, pinouts were correct. And then you can see me cutting down a couple of more trees to make sure that the wires get to the panels properly. Uh, so here I'm pulling in the line from outside for the solar wires, and they're going to be connected to that uh, additional disconnect and breaker system inside. This gives me an additional place to turn off the power coming from the solar panels, and it also gives just another layer of safety for anybody working on the system or needing to shut the system off rapidly from either side. Here you can see me uh, connecting the wires to the inverter charge controller. They are still not live. Uh, now I'm tying between the inverter charge controller and our panel with 10 gauge Romex wire, which allows for a 30 amp breaker. Now you can see me tying it to the inverter charge controller there. Uh, now I'm taking readings off the batteries to make sure that they are not live so that I can connect all the various connectors between the batteries and the system. And here I am installing a ground rod. Here are the two lines, this leg right here is the solar the line from the solar and that's so that's the input to the system um, and this line is the line from the generator so that's the backup input to the system and then right here we have our ground wire so the ground wire is going to an eight foot ground rod and then our conduit here is going to get buried. Uh, so we're going to get a trench route here and bury that conduit out to the solar panels that are on about 150 feet away uh, on the other side of a woods over here. The way that I've set this up, and I haven't 100% finished the wiring out here, but I just wanted to show it, is that this is already on a 4x4, and the 4x4 uh, when we trench the line in and drop this in, that 4x4 can be concreted and then these uh, connections here or the, the conduit here will then just sit underground so we'll have uh, this all uh, underground to about right there. Um, this is, like I said, this wiring needs a little bit of touch up here, but um, the idea here is we've got our line coming from our solar panels, that's 400 volt. Um, line coming from the panels or the it's running at 400 volts and because of that high voltage 
Um, I really wanted to make sure that we could turn off the system out here so we can turn that off. This uh, switch has a lockout tag out on it so we can actually lock it out to being turned off consistently. And that way, if work needs to be done on the line from this point in, um, we don't have to, we can turn it off and not worry about it from that side. Obviously we need to still test it, but uh, it's just an added safety mechanism. So uh, because of the high voltage, I wanted to make sure that we had a added safety mechanism to be able to turn the panels off out at the panels rather than at the building. So here's the internal system. We've got a few things to clean up still. There's a little bit of a mess. This is our breaker panel or our main electrical panel. Um, it would be a sub panel in a lot of home installations, but in this case we're using it as a primary panel. Uh, you can see that 30 amp double pole breaker on there. That is what we're using for an input uh, because we may end up adding a uh, second EG4 uh, 3000 into this system to get uh, split phase electrical, which would be 240 volts, and in which case we would connect to that second breaker. Um, and then you can see the top breaker, because we're only connected to one of the double pole, we can only connect to every other uh, connection within this panel unless we get a second uh, EG4 3000. Um, and that will allow us, if we did that, then we could connect to every single breaker uh, junction or every um, bus bar back here um, as well. And then right now we've only got one uh, one connection out of it, so you see that uh, 20 amp single pole breaker that runs down to here. We'll be putting in another uh, receptacle there as well, uh, and then we'll be putting in some additional breakers to power the rest of the cabin here. Then we come down here, we've got our uh, solar input with a uh, disconnect there, and here's our EG3000 EHV48. Uh, and the connections inside of here on the far left there you can see that is your AC input that's what would come in from the grid um, in this case we're actually running it in from a generator and then in the middle is your line and neutral for the AC out um, and then on the right hand side is our photovoltaic in uh, or our PV in coming from the panels you can see that's coming from that line there uh, then right here is the battery input and all of these are easy to get to. I really like the design on how this is put together. Uh, this unit has just come up and worked properly with one exception which I'll uh, note elsewhere but it was an easy fix when I called uh, tech support. Here are the batteries. Uh, we've got two of these combined. Um, we are using the uh, RS485 connection up to the inverter there and then there is a uh, communications battery communications jumper that's jumper between the two and then the two batteries are connected together um, the batteries then run to this 80 amp breaker DC breaker that uh, should protect uh, both batteries and the inverter and give us an ability to just an additional shutoff because there are breakers on these batteries but I wanted to have an additional single uh, point of failure or single point to be able to uh, pull that breaker if I wanted to work on things over here. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed that video, please consider helping me out in a couple of different ways. One is that I'm working with Signature Solar to put this video together to give you guys this information. The reason I'm working with them is because I think they're a great U.S. company uh, who's doing really good work, has great technical support, and really good products at a really good price. So I'm working with them. Uh, if you look at the link in the description, uh, I will have a link to get $50 off any order over $500. And of course, I get a little kickback on it. And you know what? I think I deserve a kickback because right now it is 1 a.m. and I'm editing this video because I work so hard putting these things together that oftentimes I'm not done until 1, 2 a.m. in the morning uh, just to get this content out to you and make sure that you're getting information from me and I try to make it the best that I can. The other thing that you can do to help me out is just give me a like and a subscribe. Uh, probably, I think it's almost 98% of the people who watch my videos don't bother subscribing, which is crazy. That's a very low ratio of subscriptions, and people are watching, getting information. 
I'm not putting out junk content. It's great content. So please subscribe if you're watching this. That would help me out a ton. And if you want a discount on Signature Solar products, go ahead and check out my link in the description. Um, like I said, they're a great company, and there's no reason I would work with them unless they were an excellent company to work with. Thanks, everybody, for watching.